All right, what's up everyone? Today we are reviewing the Solomon Ultra Glide, which is probably Solomon's most surprising and definitely most popular trail running shoe release of 2021. And it's received mostly very positive reviews, but I don't necessarily agree with all of those. I'm gonna break down why, and I'm gonna give you the information you need to know to decide if this shoe is right for you. So if you've been following this channel, you know that I released my first impressions of this shoe back in the summer when Solomon sent this out to me. So once again, thank you Solomon for sending me this shoe. And I was pretty positive on this shoe and so you're probably wondering what changed. And quite a bit actually. Every run I would like swing back one way or the other. And that's why it's taken me so long to come to this review because there's some really awesome things about this shoe but then there's also some design elements that I'm just like can't believe they actually did it this way. But first up, as always, we'll give you a few stats of the Ultra Glide. I got a size 11 and a half as always, it fit just fine. And this is a little bit wider than some of their racing shoes. They've got basically got two different lasts that they build their shoes on. You can go read about it on their website, but there's a racing fit that's a little bit tighter in the forefoot. And then there's more of a regular fit, got a little bit more space up front. So that's what this Ultra Glide is. It's giving you just a little bit more space than some of the Solomon racing shoes. However, it is still a little bit more narrow than a lot of other brands out there. So even Solomon's, what they would call their wider fit, might be a little bit tight on you if you need a little bit extra room up front. In my size, right out of the box, this shoe weighed 11.14 ounces. So I wasn't immediately impressed by the weight of this shoe, is a little bit on that higher end. And as far as the stat goes, in the heel we have 34 millimeters and on the forefoot 28, giving you a drop of six millimeters. So not super aggressive, um, it's kind of right there in the middle. This is definitely a trail running shoe and and as the name implies, it's meant for ultra marathons. It's meant for going past 26.2 miles. So your typical 50K, 50 mile, 100 mile events. It does not have a carbon plate in it and it is definitely not a stability shoe. This is super, super flexible. So as I mentioned, I've had this shoe for five or six months and I just crossed over 80 miles in it. So right away, I was initially very excited about this shoe. Right out of the box, it feels amazing. Like this foam is just like, your feet just like sink into it. It's super soft, super comfy. The upper, it just really hugs your foot really well. There's just a really good feel right out of the box. And so that's why like I was really hyped about it in my first video. Even my first second run, like I felt pretty good. My second run, I did about 20 miles in it. So I really put it through its paces. And then I did another 20 mile run after that. And that's when I started to feel like, oh, maybe there's some things that I'm not like really liking in this shoe. But just to give you a little tour on the upper, we've got this lacing system. That's the first thing that stands out to you. This is Solomon's typical quick lace system that just tightens right up there and you're good to go. You don't have to worry about tying any loops or anything like that. It's just easy on, easy off. Pretty slick system. Solomon's are always really good with that. I never had any problems with this loosening up during my run. We also have a ton of rubber overlays. All over this shoe is just overlays all over. And <laughs> that's actually one of the things that I had a big problem with because I was running with this shoe in the summer and during one of these really long runs, I'm sweating a lot, I'm pouring a ton of water on me and I start noticing that this shoe is starting to just fill up with water and there's nowhere for it to go. And it actually, like it was forming a a swimming pool for my feet in there. Like my toes were like submerged in water until I like took this off and like dumped the water out. That's one thing that I'm just like, I can't really believe that this made it through production because if this shoe is meant for really long hundred milers, 50 milers, like this is an ultra running shoe, like your feet are gonna get wet and you're gonna be spending a lot of time in this shoe and you can't really afford to let your feet sit in water or get soaked or stay wet for a really long time. They could have solved it by just putting a few little drain holes. Uh, some other brands do this really well. They could have also solved it by just not connecting all of these overlays, like just giving a little bit of space here and there for water to get out the sides. Sticking on the upper, but moving around to the heel collar, we've got a really padded heel collar. Just felt great. The lockdown was fine. Like I didn't have any problems with that. But I do want to come back to the tongue and kind of talk about is this little pocket. And they put these on pretty much all of their shoes. And the point of this is to tighten the quick lace system and then stash the excess lace 
in this little pocket. But on this specific shoe, the Ultra Glide, in this tongue, the pocket is much smaller than some of the other pockets. You can see it's sewn on each side here, so you actually have less space for this quick lace system to get into. But then also, the entry point is much farther down than it is on some of their other shoes. And so you're actually fighting a lot with this shoe trying to get it on and off because the laces come down across this little pocket right here. And I'm not really sure exactly what I'm supposed to do with this. And so I asked a question like on YouTube and on Instagram, I'm like, what are other people doing with the Ultra Glide? Like, what are you doing with your laces? And I got a lot of people that had the same exact feelings as me, just confusion as to how this was designed like this. But the consensus was that you kind of have to like grab this and like almost like feel like you're ripping it off to get it high enough so that you can tighten everything and then stash everything in this little pocket. So that's the upper. There's a couple things that I'm just like not so pleased with and kind of like actually surprised that it made it through production and into shoe boxes and onto people's feet. Usually Solomon's shoes, like they're just really well thought out and I don't have a whole lot of complaints about the design. But with the Ultra Glide, there's been a few already and we're not done yet. Moving on to the outsole, we have Solomon's Contra Grip rubber outsole. And I had no issues with this at all. Like this is really good on all types of terrain, loose rock, even a little bit of mud. If you're getting super, super muddy, you're probably gonna want some of Solomon's other offers like the Wild Cross or the Speed Cross. But for pretty dry conditions with a little bit of mud here and there, this Contra Grip outsole on the Ultra Glide did just fine. And moving on to the midsole, this is probably going to be the place that you see the most heated debates online, uh, judging by the reactions to some of my Instagram posts and stories. I got a lot of people that said it was their favorite shoe ever, and then I've got other people that have told me that the shoe is a flat tire. There's not a whole lot of people in between. People either love it or hate it. But this foam is what they call an energy saver foam, and it's got a new designed rocker for the Ultra Glide, and it really does do a good job. Like, I really did like the actual foot strike and the follow through. Like, I felt like I was able to run really well in this shoe. It didn't, I didn't feel like it was holding me back, anything like that. But I will say, for me, it was only great for about the first 30 miles, and then it started to break down real fast. There was a really fast change from about 30 to 40 ish miles. I just felt it was that second 20 mile run. The beginning of it felt great, the end of it the shoe felt really bad and my feet were like really like not having it and part of the problem is how flexible it is so for me for trail running it's about moving through the trails efficiently and i like a good mix of ground feel with some stability but in my opinion the shoe just broke down too fast and it didn't provide me enough protection out on the trails and i think you just really have to run in this shoe for about 40 or 50 miles before you encounter this because like i said the beginning of the shoe amazing comfort. It felt great. It felt fast. I felt like my feet were protected. There's so much cushion under there that I didn't really feel all the rocks and roots and everything. But right around that 40 miles or so, it starts to compress a lot. And then it starts getting really, really flexible. But it got to the point where this really just started feeling like I was running in a road shoe. And maybe that's what people like about it. But for me, I just felt like I wanted a little bit extra protection and stability out there on the trails than what this shoe offered me. Talking about the appeal of this shoe, the looks, I love the design of this shoe. I love the like solid red bottom, the white in between, and then the solid blue on top. Like, I just think it's really cool. I think the overlays also look really cool. I think functionally they don't work very well, but the shoe really is a looker. And this summer when I was doing some group runs, a lot of people asked me what this was. And a lot of people were super excited that Solomon was making a shoe that looked like this and was made for ultra marathons. And this shoe's sitting at 140 bucks. And I honestly, my honest reaction is that I just think that's too expensive for this shoe based off of how quickly it broke down for me and for a lot of you out there that responded to me after my first video and my Instagram stories and posts and everything. But for 140 bucks, I think you should get a a lot more of that kind of like new shoe feeling out of it right out of the box it just felt so good and I was just like so sad when it changed and I also just have to be really honest with you guys like just because this is made by Solomon doesn't mean that it's going to just automatically be a great shoe. Like this is a first generation. I think there is so many like really good things about it. The mindset that they're taking for a Solomon shoe to go into this kind of like 
ultra distance for everyone. It's just a really, really cool opportunity, I think, for a lot of people to get into Solomon's shoes. Because face it, Solomon is not always known to be the most comfortable, most cushioned shoes out there. There's a lot of other brands that do that a lot better. What Solomon is known for is providing really high quality footwear for racing. And so to see Solomon kind of entering into a space like this that gives kind of everybody an opportunity to wear Solomon shoes for ultra marathons is really, really cool. And I am really excited to see version two. Uh, unfortunately for me, version one just like didn't really work. But if you're asking, will this shoe stay in my rotation? The answer is yes, because I do really like this shoe and it is really fun to run in. Uh, kind of the sweet spot for me right now is about a eight to 10 mile run in this shoe. Uh, anything longer than that, and I'm starting to get a little bit tired of the feeling underfoot. I think the foam is really close to being almost perfect for a 100 mile shoe. I think if they added a little bit of stability in here and the foam lasted a little bit longer, man, this shoe would be good. Oh, also, you gotta give us some drain holes because we're wearing these shoes for like days at a time during ultras. Uh, like there's gotta be some place for the water to go. <laughs> Sound off in the comments down below. Like, let me know what you think. Uh, I know that it's gonna be a heated debate down there because there are people that fall on both sides of the aisle on this shoe. And honestly, like there's so many good things going for it, but I just need to be honest with you guys. And just because a company sends me a pair of shoes, just because it says a certain brand name on it, doesn't mean that I'm just gonna like let things go. Like I need to be honest with you guys. I need to let you know the information that you have to have before you go out and buy a pair of shoes like this. And if you run in the Solomon Ultra Glides, definitely let me know in the comments down below how many miles you have in them and what they feel like, because I'd be really interested to hear what all of you out there think once it passed about that 50 mile mark. And if any of you guys are over 100, 200 miles, definitely let me know what this shoe feels like. But that's it for me. If you like this video, hit the like button down below and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you again soon. Bye.